Hi. What a fun the, pod that was. The crossover you've all been asking for. You sure have. Lexi Lombard is on the pad. The pad? The pad. <laughs> She's on the pad today. <laughs> She's on the pad. Really At Lexi, too. baby. Yes. Lexi yeah. Lombard. Where do I even start? Who's to say? If you don't know her. gorgeous friend. If you don't know her, what are you doing? But she is the host of the At Lexi podcast, which is one of the best solo pods too, which are hard Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Hard I've to ever do. listened to. She's incredible. She's the host of the At Lexi podcast. She's also an OG YouTuber and content creator and is just- 15 years. Such a, 15 years. Has such a beautiful, unique perspective and her voice is so soothing also. Oh, now. she needs to read meditations. She we needs to be like her. a meditation guide. Absolutely. We just love her. She also, like if you are a Team V listener, you're probably an At Lexi listener or you're about to be. Like I feel like our communities feel so similarly yeah. and like such a cool synergous vibe. Please go over there and check her out. But we really ran the gamut on this conversation today. So I mm-hmm. want y'all to just be able to jump right in. We, Lexi and I had a beautiful meet cute surrounding grief So, of course, we wanted to get into that and talk a little bit about that today. So we talked about that. We talked a lot about creativity, the Mm -hmm. way we approach projects, how we use our creative energy, the way that individuality and and inspiration or copying all comes into this kind of creative sphere and how Mm -hmm. we approach friends and different modalities. We talked about not being a person motivated by money living in a capitalistic society and how that also impacts our creativity we talked about self-care. We talked about being upset with your therapist. Sure did. We sure talked about a lot. We did. It was such a beautiful conversation, and I just can't wait for you guys to listen to it. So enough of us. Enough of us. Star of the show. Please meet or become familiar with or say hi to your friend and ours, Lexi. Lexi, welcome to the show. Thank you. I feel honored to be here. I love the show. I've been watching the show. When my mental health is out of whack, I put on an episode. Ah! When I need to come back to center, I put on an episode. I love it. And I prefer the video. I love watching you guys interact <gasps> with each other. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Thanks for that promo. Thank you. Totally. Wow. Not a lot, I feel like not a lot of people watch our videos. So that is I'm very a kind of you girl. to say. I love you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Happy Happy girls. On a show that I'm a fan of. Oh my God. Oh. We are such fans of you. And we've, I feel like, I mean, from the very beginning that we started the show, we've been talking about having you on. And of course, yeah. of course we like email you from, from an email that like neither of us ever check. And then one day one of us went in and was like, oh, Lexi, <laughs> she responded. <laughs> Which like funny that we didn't just text each other about it. We were so right. professional. Yeah. Hey so Lexi. Professional. <laughs> Best Abby. I'm yeah. sobbing because I got sunscreen in my eyes. So excuse oh, no. me if I look like I'm sobbing. I'm just so emotional that Lexi's here. Oh, it's yeah. finally all happening. Let it out, girl. Feel the feelings. Feel the Lexi. The joy. <laughs> Feel the feelings. Feel the joy. As they say, maybe we should just start with our meet cute. Because our meet cute was pretty emotional <gasps> and sweet. I will say that we will touch on a lot in this episode, I'm sure. But one thing that we truly do have in common is that we have both lost a parent. You prior to Dead me. Parent club. And I had never met you. Even Mm -hmm. though we had mutual friends, but I Mm -hmm. lost my mom unexpectedly two years ago. She had a heart attack in the middle of the night, and I was not prepared for this whatsoever. And I was 25 at the time, and still early on, people haven't lost their parents yet. I know that's going to happen as time goes on, but I only had one friend in my life who had lost their mom and I received like three little voice messages on Instagram from a meadow lark. And I was like, okay, this is cute. Not not knowing and like also there's no indications on what something's going to be about when you click a voice message. So you go into it blind and you I really like, went in just I went into the deep end. I was like, this is my responsibility. <laughs> I have to initiate you to the club. This is how I do this. And you certainly did. And you, oh, I like, I have like a warm feeling just even thinking about it. Just you reaching out and being able to cut through all of those layers so quickly to be like, I remember what the first weekend was like. I remember what you're going through. This might be where your headspace is at. And then even mentioning I was able to find a partner who also had lost a parent. We could bond over that. There are people that are going through this and 
and you can do this and also feel whatever you need to feel. It, you just really gave me a pep talk and also handed me this symbolic torch of, you know, you've got this. And uh, good. Was, I'm glad you felt it. I mean, it was such a beautiful start to our friendship, which obviously you. because we have a lot of mutual friends, I've heard such beautiful things about you, oh. but we had never even interacted. Like, I don't even think I was following you yet. Like I was like, oh, no. I know who she is, but like, I'll wait till I meet her, whatever. I, it must've popped up on my YouTube or something. I don't even remember how I found out, but I, I saw that you lost and I was like, this is how it starts. I was like, this is, I know this too well. And you're so yeah. young. I was 17. I was like, I just felt it. I knew that it was going to be a connection. Yeah. And so I didn't think twice. I was like, I'm diving in the deep end. I'm sending her voice notes. Here we go. I needed it. I, I needed it I'm because so I hadn't really heard from anyone that had yeah. had that happen and had mm. also had it happen with enough time that had passed that you were coming mm. from a healed place. Whereas right. one of my best friends who had lost their mom as well, I mean, you lost your dad, but dad and brother, a yeah. whole different thing, um, had dealt with loss. But immediate family. Immediate, immediate family, family feels the same. Yes. Yeah. And he is still in the process of grieving it. So you were the yeah. only point of contact that I had for a reality in which I could heal. And it was yeah. really nice to hear that. Aww. I'm still very much grieving, so still very much healing, but I, Meadow, I cannot thank you enough. So it was a beautiful I love you so much. It was a beautiful introduction to being fairy best friends for the rest of our lives. I, and now yeah. you're in the club and you're in a safe, supported space with us. <sighs> How are you doing with it recently? Because like you said, grief never goes away. It never ends. Grief never goes away. I'm in the process of throwing my mom a celebration of life. And Amazing. I will be flying back to Virginia, which though it's something that I'm looking forward to, to get to honor her, it's been really tough to have to bring it all up again to people mm -hmm. and send yeah. them an invitation and say, this is what we're doing because it makes it feel real again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the grief, we're having a wave right now, but I would say overall, I'm in a good headspace, but it feels like its own component within my life where I can be doing very well, but I'm still yeah. very much grieving. Holding that. Mm -hmm. Holding that. Yeah. It's beautiful that you're allowing, like you're allowing more than two things to be true at the same time. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Two things. I'm doing very well, but that's also something really heavy that I'm holding. So yes, they're both totally. true. Do you feel like you talk to her often or communicate? Like, how do you feel? Because we talk about the veil so thin a yeah. lot. The veil so thin. Oh, can tell I tell us a some of those story? Please, yes, please. Okay, please. Okay, okay. So um, my uncle also just passed away. Horrible. Oof, like also of a heart attack in December. I, I, we have yeah. a small family. God, a total mm -hmm. nightmare. And yeah. I had to fly to Georgia to go to his funeral. And while I'm going, I had a panic attack in the airport. My flight mm -hmm. was delayed. And I'm not someone that like even runs anxious, but I think that this was just too much all at once because For sure. we lost two of our family members within less than two years of each other. And that's mm -hmm. just not normal because we're all still in my head so young. And I still have like my grandma's around. So it's crazy for mm -hmm. her to watch her kids yeah. or her kids' spouses. So it was a lot. Understand why I have a panic attack. Call my therapist. I'm like, should I get on this flight? I don't know if this is a good idea. I get on this flight. Then because our flight was so delayed, I was put in a hotel somewhere in America and I had to get on another flight the next day. It was just a lot of stress, a lot of Damn. stress, a lot of moving parts to get to this funeral in Georgia. And my mom's name is Sandy, by the way. Hi, Sandy. If you're watching. Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Oh, I just got chills. So it's a very stressful experience. And then I'm in line getting breakfast at the airport the next morning to catch my flight. This woman and I are talking in line at Chick-fil-A, just making conversations. She's just being like such a little sweetie. And I order and she orders. And when they call out her name, they're like, order for Sandy. Stop, Lexi. God, isn't that just like a warm hug? Oh, I just got chills again. It's like, oh. I am obsessed when those things happen. But like yeah. when it's those things happen, it's, it's literally, Meadow and I say this You're all like, the Hi, time. Mom. No, but it's yeah. just like, duh. Duh. Of course she's here. I was like, uh, uh. She's You're like, like you course. think I wasn't with you on every one of these flights yeah. and every one of these panic attacks? I'm right yeah. here. Hello. I'm yeah. right here. I'm yeah. right, here. right here. How special is that? So there are little moments like that where exactly as you said, Gabby, duh. Like, yeah, of course. Of course she's here. Like how silly of me to assume she wouldn't be. Oh, that's so cool. She's she's like, frankly, how dare you? I'm yeah. right here. You want me to call it out <laughs> a chick flag? How dare you? Hello? You Literally, yeah. how dare you? <laughs> yeah, so moments like that, it's undeniable. And yeah. also, if we have the option to believe, why wouldn't I? 
lives. Yeah, exactly. Like if it makes some part of the human experience a bit softer and a bit easier and simpler, then like <laughs> who cares? And who let's cares? use our imagination Please. a little bit. Like we can't yeah. – of course so many things are possible. Why wouldn't that be possible? I was just going to say like the other night – I mean we were talking about aliens, my boyfriend and I, but – I was like, how self-absorbed and like, frankly, like simple minded can you be to think that like, we're it. That this is it. Like you're that, you think we're this important. Talk about actual narcissism. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You think there's nothing else? Come on. You think that we don't expand beyond time, that things don't exist far away in other galaxies? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Do I know what they are? No. But am I going to believe? Yes. Which also is why none of us were surprised when the government tried to distract us from like student loans and climate change and gun rights. With aliens? By being like, no, but guess what? Aliens are real. We're like, and we're like yeah. we know. <laughs> Which by the way, <laughs> like know. I need to talk to other people who live in my area because yesterday- I saw that on your story. No, no, no. And I only caught the end of it. Like it, it was fireworks at first. Yeah. And then I like looked out and it was, it looked like it had to have been projected from somewhere. But it was just this like box of like little dots of light and it was moving towards us. Like me and oh, Zoe were yeah. both just like Yo, jaws whoa. to the ground. No, no, that was the tail end. That wasn't even the cool part. Like it, it got really close to us and then retracted back and then it started doing that. And like you could tell that like at first it had like a word, yeah. but I was like late to the party so I couldn't really catch it. I think they were promoting a show because it said like season – Mm, okay. But it was I think it was pro- being projected from Paramount. Okay. And I could see but it it looked like I've never seen something like that in my life and I was yeah. like he was like is this when we go? Cuz like I'm down <laughs> like I'll hop in. I was <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> might be. I'm curious. <laughs> so I was like I got Literally. my bag. I'm ready. I have He's my like, I already <laughs> walked in with a duffel like I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm cool yeah. on this planet. Like let's go. If the aliens abducted you and you were able to grab one thing, what are you grabbing? What do you bring with you to the next galaxy? That is a crazy question. My dad's jacket oh. that I sleep with every night. I was like, that's a wild question. I've never thought about that. And Meadow, of course, has like a beautiful immediately. Immediate I think about response. it all the time. <laughs> what do you have, Lexi? What's yeah, your what would you bring? I don't know. Gotta ask she me. looks Gotta around answer. frantic. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, do I <laughs> no. what do I grab? <laughs> like the phone. <laughs> oh my God, what would I bring? I mean, it's not a person. We can't bring a person. They have to also get you could that can't be the answer you could yeah but i'm not gonna do that oh my god i can't say that out loud who it is and what i'm gonna have other people calling me being like oh so you're not gonna bring me yeah so you're not gonna bring me <laughs> hmm, i got it I make the cut sorry we'll circle back both of you have answers by the end of this yeah i think i would bring oh. a, a family picture when i was little of like all of us cute that's all i would bring yeah my brain's going pretty blank i was like my yeah. of kitten heels <laughs> <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> she walks onto the spacecraft like, hello, me. It's like, what does Earth look like? I'm like, like this, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, to be the hottest girl on the next planet. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. side note. Side note, before we finish talking about aliens, The Cut, my favorite publication of all time, came out with an article Mm, it had to have been either in 2019 or 2020 because I was sitting at my desk at AD and I will never forget okay. this. And they came out with an article saying, what if the aliens are hot? And it was a whole deep dive about like that's trying, the funniest thing I've like, ever heard in my life. No, no, no. It was the funniest article I've ever read. Everybody <laughs> listening, go read it. Whoever that writer is, you're a fucking genius. And it was like talking about like trying to get the aliens to like like them back. Oh my God. It was it was so good. It was so I good. We all need to that. read it. Because there's so many obvious takes. Like, what if they're dangerous? Right. What if they're right. deadly? What if they're, what if they're hot? What if they're sexy? Yeah. What if – are we going to protest alien human marriage? Like, are we going <sighs> to say, like, voting for these rights? What if they're hot? What if they're did hot? You, did you see the TikTok that's like – is alien an intergalactic slur because catch me not saying like what's your preferred term (laughs) oh my god like is it non-human like what is your preferred term because I don't want to be I don't want to start this relationship off by calling you the wrong word this alien (laughs) slur is crazy I feel like that's also such a human response as if they speak like who knows how they communicate they could just tell they're already like tapped in yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. okay wait okay wait enough alien talk and we we need to we need to get the answer because we asked all of our guests what they're currently unpacking. 
<laughs> it wouldn't be a welcome to the show without knowing. I what love you're this question. Okay. okay, honestly, what I'm currently unpacking is communication when it's something that isn't when it's something that bothered me, but a little bit of time has passed and it still is bothering me, but then mm. it feels maybe dramatic to bring it up. Mm. Navigating that communication. This particular instance, Like involving someone else? It involves someone else. Like I'll give a little details. Honestly, it's between me and my therapist who I adore <laughs> and I trust. <laughs> right. I love this. I had mentioned something to her in my last session and she took it as a very groundbreaking realization. And in my head, I'm like, we spent all of 2018 talking about this. You're like, why don't you remember, Stacy? She mm-hmm. had made a comment and I said, no, actually, I feel this way because of this. And she's like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, yes, you did. And we spent, uh, and I don't know, I'm speaking with her tomorrow. And I'm like, do I say it really bothered me that you forgot this large chunk of my life? That was a huge, important chapter because it's also human to forget things, but also you're my therapist. That is a really good unpacking. Yeah. You think? That is, yeah. oh my God, that is such a good unpacking because it's so nuanced. It's true. Like I, I, and I, it's interesting because I had a therapist from 17 to 24. So I had a therapist really long-term too. And that bitch wouldn't write down one thing. She's on the podcast, not to call you a bitch. Hi, Kim. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but she would never write anything down. And you know that like the second I'm walking out the door, she's got to be taking furious case notes because she never missed a beat and would yeah. remind me of stuff that I forgot. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, How? Like I forget because I, I see individual clients as well as brands now. And like, I can find myself taking a second to remember X, Y, Z detail. Totally. Because totally. mm-hmm. it's human. But like, it is it like when you have a long-term relationship with a therapist that understands you deeply, you expect them, the big points to be ingrained. Yeah. And I, it does feel like a fair expectation. It, to me, it feels like a fair expectation. I, me too. Me. The way that my brain went, I'm like, my like... Well, at the end of the day, therapy is about you. Like my brain went yeah. there and I was like, what if, and everyone listening, that's like all Gabby, I mean, any friends of mine who are like, oh my God, you make everything about your feelings. It's exhausting. Like, what if, what if you just say everything it to her, feeling. like what, just, you just tell her and you're like, Hey, this frustrated me. And then maybe that becomes an unpacking of like exactly. why it frustrated you and why you like, maybe it brings up something from, it always comes back to the childhood. Like, what if someone forgot your birth? Like, you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. it could be an interesting exploration, or maybe she just fucking forgot. Like, she probably just forgot and it's not that deep, but the way that it impacted you, maybe that could lead you down like an interesting route. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up, but the concept of even bringing it up and having dis, I don't mm-hmm. like expressing my disappointment in people because I hate having to even have expectations for people, but because. There's a nuance in this relationship where I'm hiring her for her Mm -hmm. professionalism. Otherwise, I'd just be chatting to a friend about it, that it bugged me in a way that I don't think it would had it been a friend. Totally. Mm. Totally. So I'm going to try bringing it up. This is new to me because, as I said, she she hasn't missed a beat before. But this is a big beat that she missed. It's like she forgot a song in the album. I'm like, Mm, come on, but we've we made this album together. The album together. Yeah. yeah. How did you yeah, forget yeah. this whole song? It's like she heard me bring up lyrics and she's like, oh my God, what a beautiful song. I'm like, we wrote it. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We wrote We wrote this. This is yeah. our song. I also think even what you just said after is the other beautiful unpacking to follow it up with. Like, mm-hmm. I don't like projecting expectations yeah, exactly. on people. And if I'm disappointed, I'm allowed, I'm a human. I'm allowed to feel disappointed by things sometimes, but I'm uncomfortable expressing that. Like, dive into that. Get your money's worth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. I feel like I can bring it up to her, but I was- You totally can. Letting yeah. the thought pass by over and over again, thinking it would go away, but it just right. kept circling around me all week. So it's clearly important. It's not going away. I just need to bring it up and then I think it'll actually- move on. That's really cool. Please circle back with us. We'll do. I want to we'll hear do. how that goes. I'll let you know like what she, she has to say. I love her, but mm-mm. she made a mistake. We all do. We, yeah, all, do. we all do. See, and that's why I'm like, but you're, you know, but you're allowed it? to feel that way too. You're allowed to feel the exactly. way that you feel. It's also really fun that you're unpacking is communication because so much of what you and I wanted to speak about today was storytelling and like mm-hmm. communicating mm-hmm. in an artistic medium and creative ruts. And I know you're exploring kind of different modalities 
right now and thinking about the way you approach spaces. Should we start with where I've begun telling stories? Let's start with where you've begun. Yeah. yeah. Give All us right. a background and then catch us up to where you're feeling about storytelling right now. I could begin with saying that I started a YouTube channel when I was in seventh grade, but I think we should really begin with me in third grade with my first email, Lil Miss Chatty 315. I've always been a chatty girl. I'm changing your yes, name, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. I've, yes, always ma'am. Been <laughs> I've yeah. always been making friends. I've always wanted to know. I've always wanted to share. I've always been curious. One of the feedback that I would get from teachers time and time again was, she's going to talk to whoever we put her next to. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not just her friends. Like, she's going to make friends with everyone. She wants to know everybody. And it's I so think that that really rang true. And as living life and gaining experiences, I love to share those as well. So then began a YouTube channel, honestly, for several reasons, just wanted to be friends with the popular girls in middle school, but it turned into a YouTube channel that turned into- Wait, did popular girls have YouTube channels? Yes, they didn't have YouTube channels. They would make music videos and post them on a channel. Of course gotcha. you did. Yeah. yeah. You know, okay. very like yeah. baby yeah. No, I know. Justin Bieber, TikTok Kesha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, I had a Disturbia one. Me and my friends, totally. we would flick the lights. <laughs> <laughs> I had This is where I'm just three. slightly older than the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all these little effects, very macro yeah, yeah. photo booth. Totally. Turned into mm-hmm. a real oh YouTube channel that I really enjoyed speaking to the camera. So I've had a YouTube channel for about 14 years at this point. And then one of the requests that I was always getting throughout my YouTube channel was we want longer form content. We'd love to hear you speak for longer. Whereas a lot of my friends that also had YouTube channels that I had befriended along the way were, I want you to have a clothing line. I want you to just being requests to different things. So I was like, okay, podcasts feel like everybody's doing them, but I really would want to do one. I think, I think I'm doing it because it's coming out of a core desire as opposed to just looking around with my head on a swivel. Let me try it. And I love it. So I am now the host of the Lexi podcast, which we love. I'm like, I don't even know what to say in terms of, I'm like, everyone go sign up. It's not what you do. I don't, when, when I try and listen, promote this podcast, I'm like, listen. go, I'm like, subscribe. Like, what is it? Go listen. Go listen. To the go listen. Yeah. listen. It's, audio at Lexi. Only. it's a solo podcast. It's me in your ear. Think of Stream it like of a phone consciousness. Call. I love it. Yeah. It's my little diary. It's a lot of personal experiences. I mean, I... A lot of interaction. A lot of Q&As and interaction oh, as yeah. well. The first half is always a little headspace catch up of where I'm at. And then the second half is a Q&A with the audience where I'm answering questions about where your head's at. But we discuss... I have an episode the day after my mom passed because mm-hmm. yeah. speaking really is... Oh, I listened. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh. Of course. Yeah, of course. That, that was... Probably one of my most proud episodes, but an episode I probably will never be able to like go back and listen to. Was it cathartic? So cathartic. Incredibly cathartic. Was it scary? Sorry to pigeonhole on to this, but it's obviously so interesting to me. Was it scary to have it be so raw and cathartic and put out there? Or was it because you've had so much experience on the internet? You were like, you kind of knew your own boundaries. Like, did you edit it at all? Did you know your own boundaries with it? Like, how did you kind of approach that? I think the editing was pretty minimal for that because there were definitely some parts where I would go into hysterical crying and it's like, we don't need minutes of that. So I would clip that out. But the hardest part for me about that is every relationship in life has its own sort of dysfunctional element. And bringing my family onto my podcast was something that I always felt hesitant to do because Mm -hmm. yes, it's my story, but it's their story too. And who's to say that they want that living on the internet. So a way that I could honor my family while also expressing my pain was a hard, a hard thing to navigate. But overall that episode I I adore and I hope a that episode. this helps so many other people yeah. too. My God. Yeah. I think it also, I think a neighbor listened to it in my neighborhood who knew my mom and like passed around to other neighbors. So I think the neighborhood listened, oh. which is really oh. sweet. And I could the block heal. has your back. I yeah. know. I'm like, oh, the neighborhood, I helped heal them or like, you know, help grieve Beautiful. with them. Got to be there, yeah. which is sweet because my I'm from Virginia and I don't live in Virginia anymore. So that 
That was cool. But not every, not every episode is that heavy. I also have like doing psychedelics as a teenager and like how that yeah, impacted yeah, yeah. me or the best sex I've ever had. We we run the gambit. It's interesting. Like Meadow and I talk a lot. We had a, we just came out with an episode recently about creative ruts. And mm-hmm. something that her and I talk about a lot is like this resistance that we sometimes – or I'll speak for myself. This resistance that like I feel a lot of times with putting things out there and – storytelling because for me that's like the core of everything that I've done mm. like I like I always say like I was a dear diary kid like I wrote everything and then when mm. I realized that writing was a career I was like of course I'm going to work in magazines and then it okay. from there it progressed and flourished but I feel this intense resistance when I like put content out online where half of me is like okay you want people to enjoy what they're consuming so like do I want to ask you guys what do you want to see or do I not, like you just said, want to have my head on a swivel and just like create authentically and then attract that authentic audience? And I think the answer right now for me has kind of come to like somewhere in the middle, like, and I'm okay with that. And that's where I'm at right now. But do you feel yourself doing that dance? Like, how do you navigate that whole thing? Because at the end of the day, it is also what you do for a living. Totally. Yeah. I think that I, I definitely absolutely experienced this as a lot of us do, especially in creative industries or just mm-hmm. as we're all so creative. The best pieces are always going to be the ones that yeah. are oh, deep yeah. inside. However, those aren't a dime a dozen. Those don't happen yeah. at the same quantity that we're producing content in this day mm-hmm. and age. If you're working as a professional writer, you're not going to have a gold star idea on a weekly basis like this. So sometimes mm-hmm. we do need to have filler episodes of what are what's the zeitgeist talking about Mm -hmm. what's going on in my generation, what's going on in my friend circle, what are common themes that I can pull from, and maybe I have a perspective that's in here that I can bring to these outside topics. But whenever you can cultivate something deep, those are the most rewarding and fulfilling. But I understand that that's not something that can happen on a routine basis. How do you get yourself to be inspired by the zeitgeist or the routine when you're just not? Like, do you have any tips and tricks? I know we're all now big, big fans of Rick Rubin's book. It's obviously Bible. I know. I didn't know who's going to that we're all in that. (laughs) Of course. Yeah, exactly. Could be anyone. Take a shot. Could have been anyone. Gabby, have you finished it? No, I haven't finished it yet. Because I'm I'm really – yeah, everyone oh, everyone sense. knows. Meta tells me to do something, I do it a year later. But this one came like six months later, so we're, we're progress, you know? It was really good this time. Yeah, progress, absolutely. Yeah. But so do you have any like Lexi's tips and tricks? Do you have like go-to either routines or things you consume or something you do to kind of get you feeling creatively inspired? Good question. We have been to an art gallery together. Yes, we have. You and I. And San Francisco, I used to go to museums every single week, and now I barely do. So that was really fun. I think getting out and living life, the more experiences you gain, the more you'll have to think about, the more you'll have to talk about, the more I see, the more creatively inspired I am. I find myself more in creative ruts if I've been home watching TV. Mm. But that's just the way that I personally Mm -hmm. exist. I know some people do need more time to recharge than others. I can be outside. 80% of the day and home 20% of it. And I feel like that works for me. Such a true extrovert. Yeah, but I feel like a very extroverted introvert because if it's the wrong outside, then it is incredibly draining. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if it is the right sort of energizing, I can do it for so much longer than an introvert. But totally, totally extroverted for sure. Trips, even day trips. Yeah. Getting out. I love getting out. It always leaves me feeling inspired. I was just going to say, it reminds me, I don't know who I saw saying this. I don't think it was Rick Rubin, but I was listening to something talk about like being the collector of experiences and being the observer Mm. of experiences and how sometimes like Mm -hmm. taking the step back, but being out and about in life, but just like noticing different things or paying attention to things you used to not to. And like thinking of it as like collecting little items is how you like regain. And like you said, like you can find it in the most mundane things. Totally. But sometimes it takes, like, frankly, a lot of the time when I feel like I need to do this, not a lot of the time, but a fairly frequent amount on microdose because it allows me to go through my day and like remove a filter of autopilot Mm. to a certain extent to like really view things from a different narrative or a different perspective. I love that you brought up when you were talking about what works for you, that that's what works for you. I was having this conversation recently with some women who I adore and like have become great mentors for me. And they are just some of the most talented creatives that I know. And I was interviewing them 
for an article recently. It's the pop up home women. If Lexi knows that lives in LA. I so heard you talk about them in a pod. Yeah, I love they're pop-up the best. Home. They're yeah, the best. I, when they're my incredible. bank account is overflowing, catch me by <laughs> <laughs> home furniture. We should go together, exactly. and I'll I'll intro you to the to the ladies. The I best. would love that. We should go. We should go. Yeah. Um, and Trisha, who's the founder, who I absolutely adore. She was talking, you know, about like, you know, she was like, I'm really sick and tired of, and they're going to come on the pod one day and that's going to be such a fun episode. Yeah. But she was like, you know, I, it, it frustrates me when people interview me and they're like, so tell me how you're creative and how to be creative. She's like, anyone who's telling you like tips and tricks for being creative is like, it's not true. Cause it's what it, it is to a certain extent in the sense of like how we're talking and the dynamic of like Rick Rubin's book where it's like helping us expand, remember to be a witness, like all of these mm-hmm. beautiful sentiments that get our mind going that are inspiring. But the root of all of it and what you brought up, Lexi, is like it's about finding yourself and yeah. what works for you because what inspires Lexi and what inspires Meadow might not inspire me and what inspires me might not inspire you. And like it's really – I think right now this time is very – heavily focused on tell me what to do. Totally. Tell me what to do and how to do mm-hmm. it. And I don't want to think for myself. Swivel again. Just yep. quiet that for a second and look mm-hmm. within. That's always mm-hmm. going to be where the answers are. Because if I were to make an article or make a video about how to be creative and I were to say, you should work at night. I, You will work best in a dark room, but you will be most inspired when you're outside in fresh air, in sunlight. That's going to work for like 10 of us. Right. Or whatever the percentage is in this concept. But me telling people, oh, you should try writing in a dark room because that works for me is not helpful advice. You, What mm-hmm. I would recommend is giving yourself some time to reflect on your habits and how you've spent your time and what you found to be the most inspiring and what you found to be the most fulfilling and when you felt yourself most present and most focused and work from there. Yeah, absolutely. It's so interesting because it reminds me of like the way that I approach digital spaces and communities. Cause I feel like I'll go to your podcast. If I want to be like, feel seen or like Aww. recognized in a certain way, I'll go to other like things that I consume to feel seen and recognized in a certain way. And I think that's the beautiful aspect of like creating digital spaces. But then I also think even within those niche communities, then the, the like like-mindedness or group think starts happening. We're like Gets now uh, every, like we, we talk about it all the time. Gabby, our good friend, Annika and I's closet is becoming the exact same because I'm so inspired by them <laughs> that now I look exact. I just buy anything they buy, but now yeah. I'm not remembering my individuality, which is what led me to feel seen by them in the first place. I don't know. It's like that weird double edged sword. Totally. That happens with even within our niche communities, we end up being like, well, in order for me to continue to feel seen in this space, like, let me make sure that I'm cross-referencing and we all agree that this is it. When yeah. That when in reality, they respect mm-hmm. you for who you are and they don't need you to be them. They don't need you to no, look at, yes. look like them for you to be liked by them. And right. if that is the case, then maybe take a look at what's happening and re-identify. And also, by the way, like the best people are the ones that challenge you in a certain capacity right. where like if there is too much of that group think and if we're all thinking the same way like that's not yeah sometimes i want to call meadow and have her be like you're 100% right like yeah sometimes <laughs> i want that you know of and course. i think that's yeah. fine but other times like i don't want her to just agree with everything that i say like i want her to be the the smart and authentic loving friend that i know that she is and like give it to me fucking straight yeah sometimes mm-hmm. you want to tell call me what you her think here meadow say Gabby, you're wrong right now. <laughs> yeah. Like that was fucking nuts. Like do it again. Figure it out. Like yeah, let's yeah. let's reframe. Like you don't – I just don't think you get anywhere. My biggest motto with everything is if you are the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yeah, and I apply yeah. that. It doesn't need to be that one of your friends is smarter than you, whatever. But as long as you're being challenged in right. some way and nuance is being introduced into the conversation, that's when there is space for growth. One of my pet peeves growing up has always been when someone tries to be a little mini version of me as a way to be my friend. This would happen in elementary school, middle, even high school. Gabby understands. Yeah. And I, I'm like, if you're trying to be me, I don't need another me. I need a you because seeing me and having a soundboard that's identical, I don't want that. That's not interesting to me. That's exhausting to me. I want – that's not inspiring to me. 
I want right. you. I don't want a second me. It also doesn't come up with creative solutions. It doesn't mm-hmm. come up for good conversation. Like you, you can only be you and the I most- I don't want a yes man. Interesting and best exactly yeah. thing you can be is something different. What's just interesting is like the way that parasocial relationships work too, where like this can be the way that you look at your immediate friend group that know you personally. But then at the end of the day, like part of a lot of content creators jobs, like you are in, like, it's literally in the title, like you are influencing. And I remember I saw this video on TikTok of like, I don't know, she's like some DIY girl. I have no idea what was going on. I really didn't look into it, but it was like one video that popped up where someone had stitched her video saying that she was like, I can't believe that this girl has copied everything I do. And they were like, babe, you're literally a fucking DIY influencer. What do you mean? That's the point. Like, that's the point. So it's interesting when, like, then that – it's, like, that is – you want that for one aspect. Like, part of someone's job can be to be this, like, attainable, aspirational, like, thing. And then the right. other half is, like, with – amongst your friend groups, you're, like, yeah, but I don't want to – I'm not, like, trying to be friends with, like – like, I don't, oh, I don't need self. another me in the friend group. Ultimately right. – I want to inspire people to think for themselves and feel for themselves and be strong in that. That gains my respect. I'm like, oh, I helped you do that? Amazing. Yeah, exactly. I don't want you to have the same thoughts as me. I just want you to know how to think because of me. Yeah. Right, right, right. Or like critically, like let what we're discussing, like pin your own interests and ideas and thoughts and questions and like let's keep that going. Totally. If someone listens to this episode and they're Mm -hmm. like, oh, when you guys were talking about how to be creative and the way that it works for everyone is not the same. So then I gave myself a week to really think of what works for me and they figured it out. That's so much more rewarding than someone saying, I went on a road trip. Thanks for the advice. Totally. Totally. Um, I mean, that's still rewarding in its own way, but not in the same, to the same degree. Right. Yeah. I get what you're saying. This is kind of like my ADD squirrel brain, but you speaking of like the dynamics of friend groups and thinking differently and approaching life differently. You have an approach that's very similar to a mutual friend of Gabby and I that Gabby and I each also like kind of have different opinions on. And so I want to get into (laughs) your episode, right? Everyone loves when Gabby and I fight. So let's just fight. I love it. Because we're all going to have different opinions. But I loved you talking about not being motivated by money in a capitalistic society and then like learning how to find interest and passion and like have an understanding for that energetic exchange of money. And I kind of want to get into that because I don't think we really talk about money a lot on here. I'm happy to talk about money. Because I've had to work through a lot of shadow shit with money too, which is kind of the whole other ball game, but Mm -hmm. let's talk about it. Can you, can you tell our listeners in case they haven't heard that episode? kind of the gist of your dilemma living in a capitalistic society? Because my skill set tends to lead more abstract, I am so connected to it as a person and selling what feels like my personhood feels wrong. Like if I have, I don't know, speaking abilities or writing abilities or an imagination, it feels weird to put a dollar amount on that. And it doesn't motivate me because it's either self-fulfilling or it's not. And I would also similarly, let's say I'm a, I can draw. It's like, oh, well, like, look, I drew this for you. I just want to give it to a friend. Having a friend offer me money for that feels strange and wrong. I'm working through it because those are my skill sets. And though I'm not a doctor or a lawyer, I still want to make money and Mm -hmm. There is still a way to monetize these skills. I'm just working towards not wanting to give everything I do away for free because it's fun for me. Right. For me, if it's fun, why can't it be free? Right. Like, oh, this didn't like, this wasn't hard for me. But I was also discussing that if something's a natural ability, I have trouble valuing it because I didn't work for it. Same, same as you. Yeah. Where I'm like, but it didn't take any effort for me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Not me like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This this thing that took you so long, it was so easy for me. Yeah. No, but that's good. And that's where I hear right. so many, like, you know, whatever you wanted to find successful as. Let's say we're talking about it in the lens of, like, a very successful CEO, right? Saying, mm-hmm. like, dude, President Obama had the – he was saying this in an interview recently where he was, like – I don't know if it was recent, but I saw the interview recently. He was saying – I would really urge young people to find the things that they're naturally really good at that are easy for them and that they're interested in because then those are the things that you're probably going to excel the most at. Totally. Because it's easy for you. Because it's easy. Why is that a bad thing? 
You know, I'm just spitballing here, but do you think that's like an internalization of the American dream? Like we have to like struggle and overcome and like beat capitalism and make it to the top. I, I'm a really spiritual human and I constantly have to remind myself to come back to that, the fact that I'm existing in a human plane, having a human experience. Like that I'm so like, here I in like civilization. To be, yes. Right. Yeah. I like to be very idealistic and spiritual and big picture. And a lot of the times I think I skew unrealistic because that doesn't help when you're living in a real totally third degree society. So Which I like similar to, I, to my some of my issues where I was like, I, right. I have to do this. Like, I have to quantify this, is- this. Are you sure you don't want right. me to do it for you? Mm-hmm. Right. But I think we have friends where like, we all kind of differ on like our lifestyle expectations. What is realistic for, in terms of the energetic exchange and viewing money as a tool and not as like mm-hmm. a weapon or like, not as like a symbol of your value, but like I said, like that energetic exchange to be like, but I, this is how we communicate in this plane. That's the thing. That's the exact thing is like, we, I think the, and that's where Meadow and I agree, by the way, is like, like I'm, I'm the last year of a millennial. I'm, I'm a cusper. I'm a cusper cusper. over here. Do you lean millennial Gen Z or do you feel truly 50, 50? What year were you born? I'm 96. Yeah. I'm 96 also. I feel like I lean, um, pretty 50 50 in the sense of like, I think I'm, I'm idealistic in the way that a Gen Zer is about like mm. reinventing like possibilities structures of and structures possibilities. and success yeah, yeah, yeah. and being like solution, like whatever. But I think I lean millennial in the way where I'm like, okay, but like not at like at the end of the, in terms of this conversation is a perfect example. I hear a lot of like Gen Z conversations about like the capitalist society and like the plight and the this and the that. And while I'm like, fight your cause, sister, like do you, at the end of the day, like you are living here and like you can, you can work to fight the system and do whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, today, today on August 16th, 2023, how the fuck are you going to pay rent? Totally. So right. like we have to, there, you have to interact and exist within the society that we currently live in. To a certain extent, and again, it's like I can already hear people yelling at me, but like that's my opinion because nuance exists, people. So like you know, you can fight <laughs> systems of oppression and all of these things and do all of these important. And we're talking strictly about like money here, but at the end of the day, it's like you got to learn to play the game and play it better. Like maybe, right. maybe like that's the way of, of fighting the system is like creating it in a new way where it's like you're beating the system in like a in a more interesting way where you're like, ha, gotcha. And I don't know what the solutions are and whatever. But, but yes, I'm getting on a tangent that doesn't make sense. But in terms of what you no, and, Meadow and I sense. agree on is like, at the end of the day, like you are living here currently right now. So like, what is the balance and what is the way that we can move forward today? My solution that I came to, which I'm not married to it, but this fulfilled me at least for like the following week which was great. after this internal conflict was there are jobs being needed and services being needed that I think I'm skillful at and I'm more than happy to do that. So for a while it was, oh, I love creating videos. And I was having the mindset, I will have sponsors on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram to pay me so I can use the money towards these other projects. And then I had a reframe of, oh, well, I'm good at making content. I have an eye for this. So when a brand's hitting me up to create a video, I can just make this brand look good. And why does it have to be this whole like separate thing? Like I'm using Mm -hmm. the capitalist society. Like why can't I just use my eye to, it's already existing. Mm -hmm. I may as well have my little like spin on it and create a cute little video for them. And then I was also having the conflict of when a brand offers me money to create a video. Okay, great. But then when I have a concept, I have a harder time monetizing that and creating it into a sellable Mm. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it you and I? Someone and I were talking about creating a grief. No, you ended up creating a grief guide. I was having this thought separately, which, ooh, ooh, my brain's moving a mile a minute. I need to also bring up Rick Rubin again. Um, (laughs) A friend and I were talking about a grief guide, and she's like, you should create an ebook, a grief guide that people can purchase. I'm like, oh, I would feel so horrible like selling a grief guide. That's something that I think should just be given to people and and running that balance of should I sell it or should I not sell it? Which Mm -hmm. 
which I don't know the answer to that, which we can pause if someone has an opinion on that before I run to well, my brain. Well, my brain immediately thought. went to like, even nonprofits pay their workers. Like my boyfriend, we're, my boyfriend, my fiance, I can't say it. It's a weird word. <laughs> Your fiance, fiance fucking. Because in my head, I'm like, you've been fiancés, like, but you yeah, also. Yeah, like you've been I, married. Like, yeah. I call him, like my mom st- only calls him my husband. So yeah. It's whatever. Anyway, he works helping people that are unhoused and mentally ill. And like that is, should be a baseline level of support yeah. services that we offer to humanity but he has to pay rent in order to show up to that space and have the energy to do it totally so it's Mm -hmm. like in order for you to like learn these lessons and give things to other people like it is a beautiful thing that should be accessible to people but there's a lot of other things accessible in a lot of other ways and if this can help you to continue to collect these lessons package them through your beautiful and gifted lens and offer a space for other people to make space for their own grieving that deserves an energetic exchange You think, but if the fulfillment of creating the guide is enough for me. (laughs) But is it going to pay your rent? You still live here. I know, I know, which is why I wish I was a little bit more monetarily motivated. (laughs) I know. But it doesn't have to be your motivation, but it can still be how you can get through the day to day. Yeah. Don't make it your motivation by any Mm -hmm. means. Continue to be motivated by yourself. That's where the authentic creativity comes from anyway. No, you're so right. Accepting the fact accepting the fact that someone wants to value that in the way that's socially acceptable for how we exchange information is also welcomed. Totally. Because I love living a a certain lifestyle and that's only attained one way. Right. Right. Because that's the thing. That's the society you live in. But I think, Meadow, you hit the nail on the head. It's like, it's, it's the exchange that we have here on this plane in this dimension, like where we are now. But I think that like, it is where, where like, where I don't agree with like all of the like grind and hustle and mm, is like, I think it's fine if people aren't motivated by money. I think it's wonderful if it's, it's in a situation like Lexi, where like whatever, if whatever you are motivated by, it's fine. I think authenticity reads through. I think people's radars for bullshit are very sensitive these days in the terms yeah. that they can yeah. spot a fake from a mile fucking away. And I love that. Yeah. Me talking about talking shit about Gen Z five seconds ago. Like I fucking love that about Gen Z. Yeah. Like authenticity is king. Sorry. Authenticity is queen. Authenticity is queen <laughs> right now. Okay. <laughs> and it, it, so whatever uh, motivates you, motivates you. And I think that's fine. I don't think yeah, it needs yeah. to be this like whole fucking thing. Yeah, maybe the answer I just need to hear is that it like motivation is not the word that it needs to be associated with. Like you can still do things right. for money without it being the proper motivation. But no. the Rick Rubin thought that I wanted to share was yes, please. In I forget which chapter it is, but he's discussing the concept of when you have an idea, if you don't act on it, but then you see it through, the idea is working on its own timeline. When it's ready, yep. it's gonna come out. So. You could have been the person, but don't be upset if someone else has it because it was the idea's time. Mm -hmm. And I loved that because how many people have a business concept and they're like, they stole it. No, hon, that's just the time. It was just ready. It was ready and you weren't the person that was going to fulfill it. And someone just did it because it was the time. I can't wait to it's elaborate so on this offline because I have a very personal experience with this. I love However, <laughs> yes, you do. The, that's why I'm like just yeah. chewing my lips, trying not to speak publicly. However, the book that you both need to read next is Big Magic by Liz Gilbert. Oh, okay. it's one of my wrote TV are for so long. I don't okay. know why I haven't read she it. She has the exact same concept of like when the motivation comes running to the computer to get it out while you can because the ideas live in the ether. They live in the like, the where we trying to manifest from that's where ideas live that makes mm-hmm. sense they're to ready me. to come at a certain time if it doesn't come through mm. you she literally has an entire example of like writing a manuscript for an entire book and it not going through and whatever next year she read word for word her entire book every detail like ideas are are asking to be expressed into yeah. this plane for a certain lesson and reason and you are not the sole fucking communicator to the universe. Like this idea will come through other people. There's no totally. such thing as copying or stealing and all the, like the way that we like try to take such harsh ownership over creativity mm. and our art- artistic expression is absolutely insane to me. Yeah. 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 And detrimental, detrimental to your own creativity, detrimental to your own connection, like also detrimental to your mental health. Like it's not that deep. It's not that mm-hmm. deep. And that's what that was my concluding thought for the chapter was, huh. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's not even my idea. It was just the it, the not- idea existed. It could have been mine, but it was ready, right. and it's not that deep. It's and not that also, deep. how inspiring for someone else that's authentically being themselves, because that idea is going to be interpreted through our experience, our lens, our perspective, our biases. Like, how interesting to see the way that they navigated that, and the difference between how you yeah. would and the way you can show up. Like, that's what makes our interesting. That's what makes art continue. Is yeah. seeing the our filter that vessel. Like, doesn't mm-hmm. Rick Rubin talk about the vessel inside of you? Like, seeing that filter come yeah. through. I'm sorry. I want to bring it back to your grief guide one more time and totally. not to like, but I've just been thinking about that too, because I also never want to like impose on you, like something that feels naturally icky to you to be mm-hmm. like, no, 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 attach a dollar to it. Totally so fair. where my totally brain fair. immediately goes to is like, okay, so then maybe like, you know, that that's just a gift you want to give others and that's beautiful and that's amazing. And maybe now you know, like, okay, I need X amount of money next month to maintain my lifestyle and maintain my rent. What are the other ways that I can maybe amp up shit over here so I can give this gift? Totally. Right. You know what I mean? It doesn't need to be – not everything needs to be attached. Like, there's always room to play and for fun. It always comes back to balance and moderation. It's always somewhere in the middle, huh? This is my Libra curse. I just want everything to be perfectly balanced. I want one of everything. Yeah. But by the way, I'll help you write that if you want to write that. Yeah, that was so fun. <laughs> by the way, if that is a project you want to do, I would easily help you do that. Anyway, wait, I want to wrap this up on kind of like a cute one. Yes, Before please. we go, walk us through your self-care routine right now. My roommate's out of town right now, and I feel like I love just winding down and us chilling, hanging out. The overhead light isn't on. We're just doing yeah. lamps, mm. chatting. But realistically, my only official self-care routine besides washing my face and putting on moisturizer is writing an outline for tomorrow Mm. because my little ADHD brain will not be able to come up with that in the morning. I need to have it written for me or I will spend hours scrambled trying to figure out what I need to do. So I need a visual. I need a visual Mm, every day the night before. I love that. Love that. Does that parlay into journaling? Have you been journaling? Yes, but I would say that they're separate. I like journaling. I also um, love like reading or writing depending on – if I'm restless before bed, I write before bed. Yeah, cool. If I'm not super restless, then I'll read before bed and it helps me go to sleep. So journaling is different. The to-do list is non-negotiable. The journaling is on an as-needed basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The brained up of like emotions versus like productivity almost. Totally, totally. It's like what are – worldly tasks that I need to handle tomorrow versus right. am I in a good space mentally? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I will say I love my notion and I deck it out, but I have been struggling once again, summer, like I've been struggling summer to focus rain. so much recently that yesterday I was like, okay, I'm just going to pick things realistically that I can get done in this day yeah. and not the whole list of everything I need to start and everything that I'm working on. Like, let me do pen on paper, just what I can get done today. Y'all, I crossed out all seven of those items so fucking fast, and I've had the most productive day I've had in forever. Totally. Just because I get the satisfaction of crossing it and having it. Mm Because I hadn't done that in a while because I was so deep into my notion. Yeah. But sometimes that's a lot. You're like seeing the whole month laid out, and it's a little overwhelming. And so I had to do that that at one point as well where I – have you guys read the book Essentialism? No. No. The premise of it is that really you can only have one priority at a time. Yeah. Like you can't have, there can't be all these priorities. You can want them, but. Gabby needs to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best of us because yeah. it's hard to not want everything always. Or just be multifaceted and have like the different creative outlets and projects. Yeah. And, yeah. But it's not necessarily sustainable. Oh my God. There's the most beautiful gigantic butterfly that just flew in <gasps> front. Oh, hi, Sandy. Hi. Hi, Sandy. Love that. Oh my girl. Wow, that is so good to end on. It's not even funny. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, um, but I was saying after I read that book, I needed to do make to-do list that only had one or two things on it. It was like realistically, what are the things I absolutely need to get done? Once you can get those finished, then you can add more onto the the list. But just have Mm -hmm. your one or two things. Like you need to write this paper. That's the only thing. You don't get to put dry cleaning on there. You don't get to put check email because that's 
not as important as whatever it is. But wow, the butterfly, guys. <laughs> love that. <laughs> so Thank cute. you so much for having me. I really love this. Oh my, gosh. oh my gosh. Lexi, Thank you, you so are welcome anytime, please. Oh. Thank you for being such a trooper through. Don't don't tempt me with a good time. I'll be back super <laughs> soon if that's the offer. <laughs> oh, we love you so much. Guys, this is okay. a truly a pleasure. Thanks for listening, guys. Everyone, go listen to Ad Lexi. Obviously, all your links will be below. But yeah. if you're on YouTube, immediately pop over to your YouTube. If you're listening to this in podcast or Spotify, immediately pop over to our pod. Yeah, I'm everywhere on the internet. You'll find me where you want me. How's it going, y'all? It's Aaron. Don't let your Monday suck. Don't have those Sunday scaries. I'm tired of everybody waking up in the week saying, ah, shit, it's Monday. You know what goes down? TMV releases every week on Mondays. Make sure you rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're watching YouTube, yes, TMV has a YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and ring that noti bell and never miss a thing. And also, join the TMV familia by joining the Thoughts May Vary Patreon and by following at Thoughts May Vary Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you for listening. Great. There you go. Thanks, ladies. Gotcha.